Right, uh, Silla Peterson, ANC Youth League Free State spokesperson, will be joining us over the phone line. We also have Sviso Matlangu, will also be joining us on the phone line. A very warm welcome to Sviso Matlangu. Um, uh, right now, um, uh, we know that uh, the uh, views, can uh, Can you just explain those views for us about uh, the communists and what they want to achieve from this national conference? A very good afternoon to you as well as the viewers. We are in Birchwood Hotel in a Boxburg where we just heard submissions at the SACP briefing just presented after 2 p.m. where we saw Blade and Zimande, the General Secretary, as well as Jeremy Cronin unfortunately saying that after 22 years of being in his position as Deputy General Secretary, he's stepping down as to whether Blade and Zimande will also follow suit. Uh, no indications of such were made. Another key submission that we heard from that particular briefing is that the SACP says that depending on what will happen at the end of the year as uh, with the ANC, they'll basically decide what to do next. Uh, pretty vague as to whether the, the, the SACP, the movement rather, will basically also stand for the 2019 elections or not. Jeremy Cronin came out strong saying that will not happen, but we know that uh, a lot of things are on the cards. But I also have with me our our resident political analyst Fiso Matlangu to also shed some light on some of the key submissions that were made. A very good day to you. Uh, it's been quite an eventful a couple of hours where we heard key submissions from Blade and Zimande from Solima Baila. Can you maybe uh, give us clarity whether there'll be any change in the leadership of the SACP? Well, Cindy Siwa, good afternoon and good afternoon to your viewers. I think there are three key issues that the SACP is trying to, to determine in this weekend. They are trying to be relevant as an ideological partner and alliance member of the ANC. They've always been the group of intellectuals that have tried to empower the ANC with the wisdom to govern in a democracy. However, many South Africans still believe that uh, communism in this country, particularly within the SACP, died with uh, Mr. Chris Hahn. So this is a week in which the SACP in South Africa needs to redefine itself as an alliance partner. However, Mr. Bladen Zimanda has been in this position for 18 years, Mr. Jeremy Cronin for 22 years. It's not going to be an easy tenor. So for them, it's to try and identify who can step up as they have to leave. However, these discussions are going to revolve around state capture because these are the one of the only things that can be discussed in this nation, particularly by the SACP. They've continually called for President Jacob Zuma to step down. The president and the top six have refused that because the, the SACP does not represent the branches of the ANC. So they looked to have lost power and lost steam over the years. And I think this is a week that... Um, they try and redefine themselves, a week in which new leadership of the SACP might evolve. That leadership, however, is not going to be easy because after Bladen Zimande, who will take over? Who is there in the SACP for leadership besides Mr. Solima Baila and Mr. Jeremy Cronin? So it looks like an organization run by four key people and without them then this party is dead so they continue to threaten the ANC and say they might go at it alone and the ANC at this point has showed them the other hand and said uh, if they want to go at it they should contact the IEC and uh, try and be a political party they know they won't get one seat in parliament so this is to erupt the branches of the 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 SACP you know uh, revolutionize them about state capture make them an, an, an eminent voice so that the ANC can believe that the SACP has got enough power in the ANC branches to, to, to maybe turn the votes away from the ANC in December and in 2019. So I believe this whole weekend is going to be a threat at the current ANC leadership to say, if you don't take us seriously, this is what we're going to do. If that is going to be feasible, we don't know, but it's going to be a good threat indeed. And then we know that last week a free state branch of the ANC basically said that uh, SACP members should be taken out of power within uh, ministries, within the government. Do you think that this shows that there's a crack in the alliance partnership? This, this for me has always been an interesting point in the see how, you know, the SG of uh, uh, the SACP can also be a government minister. Uh, we had a conversation earlier with uh, Mr. Mkabud Lamin, 
to say you're a student that is calling for free education, but you're going to sit on the same table here with Mr. Bladen Zimande. There's a difference in ideology here, and you get the sense that people are playing a two-sided coin, and perhaps they're really not being honest on what they want to do with leadership in this country. But the other question I think South Africans have in their mind is that um, what will happen to the SACP without the ANC? Because it seems to be milking the ANC, and if it should desire to pull away, let them make an adequate point and just break ranks and move away. It's enough to continue to make threats and say we're going to break from the alliance, the, the alliance is injured, you know, the alliance has hastened, the, the alliance has fallen away from the cause of democracy. If they really feel that they don't want to be an alliance partner with the ANC, this is the SACP and COSATU, then surely they've got enough means to just exit the party. But they know they cannot do that. So in this particular meeting on Wednesday and Thursday, there's going to be presentations from anti-Zuma groups. The South African Council of Churches, which has been very vocal against President Jacob Zuma, will come and speak. The stalwarts that, uh, you know, uh, uh, staged a, a, a walkout or a no-show at the ANC policy conference will also be given a point. We are informed that even members of Save South Africa might come. So this seems like an anti-President Jacob Zuma and an anti group gathering. So it won't raise eminent points for land expropriation. It will not raise eminent points to radical economic transformation. What it will be, it will be a gathering of people who want to discuss what is wrong with South Africa. But in those discussions, I don't know if anyone here will be able to provide the solutions. I would believe that in leadership, if somebody wants to find a solution, it is to meet the, the person that you have a challenge with and try and... Uh, and try and have a conversation, a nuanced conversation on a solution. Just phase. to interject, do you think that the MKVA not being here are possibly part of the faction that is pro-President uh, Jacob Zuma? Well, definitely. How do you have a meeting with people you have never met? You, you know, the, the SACP is saying at this point, if they don't listen to us concerning the fact that Zuma must fall, we'll break away from the alliance. And in no way is that a good leadership tactic. You can't speak to any leadership with some demands and they find themselves solely alone. Because whilst the stalwarts and whilst the SACP and uh, other members of the alliance call for President Jacob Zuma to step down, the president has still got a lot of backup with other leagues, the Youth League, the Women's League, uh, many, many branches within the, the ANC. So this is a period, I think, in which the SACP wants to re-identify itself and try and make itself relevant so they can be believable to, to the ANC. The, the, the MKMVA has made a prudent point to say they will not attend any conference where the ANC president is uninvited. And I believe if you're an alliance partner or any member, if your president is not allowed to speak, in what capacity are you going? But I think the hype of this week will be the fact that the deputy president, Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa, will come and address the SACP. And the strange thing is that they disallowed President Jacob Zuma to speak, but they have invited the Deputy President, Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa, to speak. And these are the same group of people who are saying they are standing against factions. And I think if you allow one person to speak and not the other, you are perpetuating a faction still within the alliance. Just to play faction. devil's advocate, don't you think that they, they've actually said that they've uh, issued a letter out to the African National Congress and basically said that since it's the mother body, any member of the African National Congress can come, but the president, that in a way it was a call to appease the movement? Well, listen, Cindy, the, the reality is that the SACP cannot uh, sub subdue an election. They cannot stand an IEC election. If they believed that they could, they would have attempted that long ago. If they get one seat in the 2019 elections, it will be by the pure bliss of miracle. They know they can't do that. And Why is that? Why can't they stand they elections? They have circulated funds from the ANC. They don't have a voter role and a voter majority of communism that can support them. Socialism and communism is dying all over in the world. The very people who are leaders in the SACP are ministers in the cabinet of the president they don't want. So if you don't like the president, if you don't like the ANC and you have problems with the ANC government and the ANC in parliament, isn't it feasible that the deputy minister, Mr. Jeremy Cronin, Mr. Tulas Nguesi, uh, Mr. Blitzeman, shouldn't they resign? 
in solidarity with their movement? Shouldn't they resign to show that they have a significant prob a problem with the leadership of President Jacob Zuma? But you expect President Jacob Zuma to resign, but they will hold on to their positions? It seems disingenuous to me. So they know they will coming not to have the a notion, role. Coming to the notion of the SSCP being a communist movement, do you think that white capital monopoly will also filter because we know that communism as well as capitalism are in conflict? Well, these are the same leaders who claim... Uh, uh, socialist and communist mindset, but they are ministers in cabinets. Many of them have, you know, entrepreneurship and, and projects. So the, the, the idea that they are communist and they lead communist agendas is not feasible and it is not true. They know they will not make it into an election. This conference is about them trying to re-strategize how they can manipulate the ANC into giving them power. That was basically Sfiso Masango, our political analyst of ANN7. We could go on and on about about this particular topic, but we know that this is going to continue on for four more days here at Birchwood Hotel. We'll have more for you tomorrow. Uh, possibly we're also expecting that tonight international guests will also be here in attendance, and we know that my colleague will have more for you back to you in studio. Thank you very much, Cindy Sue. Right now, I'm also joined by uh, Silo Peterson, ANC Youth League Free State spokesperson, and he joins us over the phone line. A very warm welcome to you, and thank you so much for your time. Now, we know that uh, the SACP says it will not take a decision on splitting from the alliance just yet. Uh, what do you make of the statement? Look, uh, as the ANC Youth League in the Free State province, we think that the, the National Policy Conference of the ANC was quite emphatic on the need to unite the alliance. It was quite emphatic on the need to have a discussion that is uh, guided properly by politics between the leadership of the ANC and the leadership of the Communist Party in an attempt to ensure that the alliance with the ANC through the president of the National Council Conference has reiterated that indeed the historical mission of the alliance uh, has not been achieved. And as such, it would be quite uh, a sad day if the South African Communist Party would really not take this opportunity to engage the leadership of the ANC and the president in particular, so that we're able to identify the smaller challenges, really, which are making us to differ. Because we think as the UCLIC, the ANC has provided direction. The leadership of the ANC is saying, come, let's sit on the table. What is dividing us is really very much little compared to what is uniting us as, 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 as the alliance. Because remember, one of the central uh, objectives of the National Democratic Revolution, which is basically a program that is uniting us as the alliance, is to ensure that we take our people out of the morass of poverty, we bring about hope, we bring about social change, and we still think as the UCLIC that the ANC has provided guidance. We are willing to, to work together, but we are hoping and we are appealing to the delegates in this particular conference that we must not be emotional about this issue, we must not tear ourselves apart, we must follow in the in, in the words of Comrade Uwar Tambo, says this year of Uwar Tambo that the unit of the alliance is sacrosanct. It will be unfortunate, really, if the, the party would uh, lose this particular opportunity, which has been presented by the National Policy Conference of the ANC. Mm. And now the SACP says it values the alliance, uh, but it still doesn't want uh, President Zuma at its events. Uh, is this some kind of a double standard? Uh, sorry, can you come again? I didn't, I didn't get that. The SACP says that it values the alliance, uh, but it still doesn't want uh, uh, President Jacob Zuma at its events. Is this some kind of a double standard? Well, uh, look, our view as the UK, we have raised this issue earlier on with regards to the posture of Michael Sato, that the president of the ANC must not go and address them. The, unfortunately, the Communist Party has also adopted the same posture. That is why we are saying, in our view, the leadership of the ANC in the policy conference has provided guidance. Uh, it's urgent. We need to have a bilateral agent because at level of the leadership of the ANC and that of the party to really resolve this particular issue. Because for, to us, as a youth league, it really does not make any political sense. Why are you saying the president of the ANC must not come and speak in your event? Why are you prescribing to the African National Congress as part of the alliance who should come and speak on their behalf and so on? We say it's unfortunate. <laughs> For instance, as the public and the NC are going to elect the leadership of the party, we are...
All right, I seem to have lost uh, Silo uh, Peterson, the ANC Youth League Free State spokesperson. He was joining us on the phone line, just giving us some more on what they think as the ANC Youth League from the Free State. As we know that uh, the SACP is keeping its options open as it begins its 14th National Congress today. And the Congress is meeting amid strained relations and talks of a possible split from the ANC-led alliance.